Hello, Dark Reader, and welcome to the Dark Side of the Library podcast. I'm your host, Katie. Today, we are going to be talking about November comic books and graphic novels that are coming out. I'm very excited. This is definitely my wheelhouse, so we're going to show some book covers over on YouTube and maybe some panels if I can find them. So watch over there if you're more of a visual person, but you can find us over on your favorite listening app as well. Make sure to subscribe, follow, uh, so you can get notified anytime we do upload a new video slash podcast episode. We do publish every Wednesday and Friday. Anyway, that's my little spiel of today. So first on our list of comic books, I'm really excited because I'm an alien fanatic. That was like one of my first horror movie franchises that I was very obsessed with as a kid, probably way too young. So this is Alien. This is by Declan Shalvey and Andrea Bricardo is the illustrator. They take the Alien franchise and add to it. So Talbot Engineering Inc. is under new management and the brilliant chief scientist Batya Zahn will do just about anything to get her whole family off the icy moon where they've been conducting research on water conservation. I like this. But there's more than glacier springs to find in this corner of the galaxy. They discover an extraordinary organism buried in the ice, and it doesn't take long for tensions to start heating up. I wonder why. So we have clearly Batya, the scientist who is fighting for her life, fighting for her family's life against the alien. So this is a new alien comic book. This is a completion of Aliens 1 through 5 by Declan Shalvey and Andrea Bricardo. And this comes out November 14th. Next on our list today, this sounds Fun because this is apparently a mix between Jaws and an arachnophobia. It's all eight eyes. This comes out November 28th. This is by Steve Fox and Peter Kowalski is the illustrator. This is published by Dark Horse Comics. In the forgotten corners of 9-11 New York City, skittering shapes in the darkness prey on the people society leaves behind. So college dropout Vin Spencer floats through life in a drug and party fueled haze until one terrible night sweeps him into the drifter's reckless war against the giant eight-legged horror stalking the city. Uh, the art is really interesting, a kind of sketchy, but really fun. This looks like a great read, especially if you are afraid of spiders and you're like, I just want to be scared this season. Uh, this is All Eight Eyes. This is by Steve Fox and Peter Kowalski. Next on our list today is Ghost Lore, Volume 1. This is by Colin Bunn, and Leo Max is the illustrator. It comes out November 14th. What ghost stories do ghosts tell, and what can they tell us about ourselves? An estranged daughter and her father wander a haunted land. They only have the restless spirits, each with its own story to tell as company along the way. After a deadly accident of which they are the only survivors, Lucas and Harmony Agate can see the dead. An overwhelming amount of the deceased, all with their own warnings, cries for help and malevolence alike. But Lucas and Harmony aren't the only ones with this ability. There are other, quote, nearly deads, some of which have malicious motivations. This sounds really interesting. The artwork is beautiful. Uh, this is Ghost Lore Volume 1, and it's by Colin Bunn, a pretty amazing author, and Leo Max, an illustrator who I've never heard of, so I'm very curious about it, and the cover art looks great. Next on our list today, I've actually never read this before. It's called Grendel, Devil by Deed. This is the Master's Edition slash Limited Edition, they say. It's pretty hefty, so it's only 136 pages, but it's $124, actually $25 on Amazon right now, which is crazy. Uh, but if you are a fan, this would be, or if you know somebody that is a very close friend, family member, this would be a really special gift. The sleeve looks great, as you can kind of see. Uh, we'll give you some book covers over on YouTube. But um, anyway, this comes out November 21st. This is by M Matt Wagner fantastic illustrator slash author, and then Brennan Wagner. So this is a limited edition run, and that includes a signed and numbered tip-in sheet, which features stunning never-before-seen art by Matt Wagner, uh, and a great slipcase like I was talking about. The original tale is of the dashing and diabolical 
Hunter Rose was deceptively brief considering its cultural impact. So Matt Wagner returns to the seminal Devil by Deed, Hunter Rose story that started the epic century-spanning Grendel saga. In this all-new reimagining of Devil by the Deed, Wagner brings his decades of experience and artistry back to the famous narrative that first began his lengthy and illustrious career as a comic book author. So I have to admit, I really should know what this is, and I feel really horrible. Uh, Grendel is huge. Um, I, I know I've heard of it before, but I'm going to have to look. So this sounds really interesting. It has 120 all-new story pages that will dazzle first-time and long-time readers alike. So that's what makes it a master's edition, limited edition. It's an add-on. So this is Grendel Devil by Deed by Matt Wagner. Oh, next on our list, I'm really excited. We have two Jim Henson graphic novels here and I well just that I've listed there's actually quite a few coming out in November which is kind of great it's a magical time in November in my opinion it's darker it's very autumnal still it's just really beautiful and Christmas lights are coming up but it's still kind of eerie anyway so we have Jim Henson's Beneath the Dark Crystal this is the complete 40th anniversary collection 320 pages. This is more reasonable to me. Um, and it's $75. It's a continuation of the Geflings from uh, Jim H Henson's The Dark Crystal. So after a time of peace, the Gel the Gelfling looked to Kensho to take the place of Jen and Kira as leader of Thra. Meanwhile, Therma strives to rebuild the realm of Mithra, but her quest is thrown into question when someone makes a claim as the true heir to the Ember Queen throne. Worlds apart and their hopes of reuniting dimming, Kensho and Therma must face their past and future as each struggle to meet the challenge of their destinies. As they discover shocking truths and return to their homelands, will they be able to unite their two kingdoms when a new enemy more powerful than they could have imagined makes their move? I love this. I actually hated the Dark Crystal when I was a kid. It grew on me as an adult. I love just the fantastical elements of it, the creatures, the artistry, and then even more when we had the Dark Crystal series on Netflix. Oh, so good. I'm sad it stopped, so I'm glad that we get a continuation or a complete edition of Jim Henson's The Dark Crystal. So this is The Dark Crystal, the complete 40th anniversary collection. It looks amazing. And then we also have Jim Henson's Labyrinth Beyond the Goblin City. Uh, this comic book is 192 pages, a little smaller if you have somebody in your life that loves Jim Henson and... David Bowie, and of course, we have Labyrinth. Who doesn't love Labyrinth? Um, this would be a really great thing to add to their collection. So, you return to the masquerade, celebrate the beloved Jim Henson, and of course, this amazing film with complete collection with a complete collection of stories from inside the magical walls of the labyrinth. So there's a secret history of Sir Didymus and the untold story of one of Jareth's masquerade guests who embarks on a journey of self-discovery after Sarah shatters the mirror during the masquerade ball. In addition to stories featuring fan favorite characters like Ludo, Hoggle, Sir Didymus, and the Goblin King, uh, this epic collection showcases more tales from writers that include... Delilah S. Dawson, Gustavo Duarte, Sas Millage is the illustrator. Uh, we have other authors here. Jeff Stokely, uh, Cena Grace, Katie Cook. I mean, there's a ton of people in here. So if you are looking for a cool, it seems like an anthology, but a comic book anthology of more Labyrinth stories, this will be really fun. This is Jim Henson's Labyrinth Beyond the Goblin City. This is by a ton of authors. It comes out November 14th. Next up, we have one that looks very metal. I dig it. It's called Lamentation, which also sounds super metal. Uh, this came out November 7th. This is by another Colin Bunn is coming out uh, this month. Arjuna Susani is the illustrator. Hilary Jenkins is the colorist. 
So, after weeks of grueling rehearsals, a new production is set to begin at the famed Requiem Theater. It's called Reside's Lament, three acts of gothic horror set inside a haunted castle with a story that some say is more than mere fantasy. Under the stern rule of dedicated but temperamental director, the script seems to be ever-changing, and more mysterious still, our lead actress has found herself cast in the role of a lifetime without so much as an audition. Well, how sus. Her opening night is coming fast, and with it, a barrage of razors in the night that will terrorize audiences and actors alike. There is no exit, no escape. And when the curtain finally rises, Razid himself will take center stage to cross the threshold into the unholy darkness that lies just beyond. So really, it is metal, but like elegant metal. Metal's elegant. The whole, I think this should be a musical, like a metal opera. I can see it. I can imagine it. So this is Lamentation. This is by Colin Bunn, Arjuna Susini, and Hilary Jenkins. Our next comic is New Rat City. This came out, this comes out November 14th. This is by Honor Vincent, Jorge Cuadros, and DC Alonso. This is published by Scout Comics. So we have New York City in 2083. This is decades after floods, there's infrastructure disasters, abandonment, and really like the shadows of what used to be the greatest city in the United States, or at least some people believe. So this is a sci-fi graphic novel about what might happen to New York City if uh, the rats and roaches win. I think if you live in New York City, you'll probably get a kick out of this comic because I think if you're not a local, you might be like, really? You might not want to go to New York City, but this might be kind of hysterical. So there are pest controllers that keep the city livable for the few people who do remain. They're limited by law to using non-lethal methods like sound cannons and pheromones until a massive rat horde spurs the mayor to lift the no-kill order for two weeks so tourists don't stop visiting. This sounds hysterical. Raised to believe it's wrong to kill anything alive or living, Felicia Shepard is a pest controller who only uses non-lethal methods to manage the swarms of rats and roaches that are plaguing her city. And that worked well enough until they started to uh, talk to her. (laughs) As if that wasn't enough, she's also wrestling with a growing suspicion that her mother, who disappeared after a horrible accident with a neural implant, isn't actually dead. I wonder if she's like the queen of rats. I can see that. That's probably the whole premise of the story. This is unique. I like it. It's out. I mean, the art is great. I love the the cover art with this perspective here. It's really awesome. So this is New Rat City by Honor Vincent, uh, Jorge Cuadros, and DC Alonso. Next up, we have Oni Ronan. This comes out November 28th. This is by Kohei Nagamine, Mac Flavel, and Tatsubi is the illustrator. This is set in Japan during the Sengoku or, quote, Warring States period. It's a tale of cowardice, sacrifice, and redemption. We always have to have three stages. Always. So we actually combine historically accurate characters and locations with mythical kitsune and malevolent demons from Japanese folklore. Which is why I'm really pumped about this. It's a redemption story of the cowardly Sorobi, a samurai messenger who meets feudal lords, brave warriors, and heroic ghosts on his journey of self-discovery. This might not seem very dark, dark, like, you know, not, you know, gore and scary all the time, but I love this. I love historical fiction, and I love Kami. They're awesome, and I want to see more, more Kami. So we have Oni Ronin. This is by Kohei Nagamine, Mac Flavel, and Tatsubi is the illustrator. We have three more comics on our list, so stay tuned because this one is uh, hysterical, but make sure to tune in to our show notes uh, on darksideofthelibrary.com and join us on our live streams on amazon.com slash live slash darkside of the library. We're going to be presenting a lot of cool ghost stories, and when we do live stream, because it's tis the season for the ghost story. So make sure to join us and comment and subscribe, all those fun things. 
All right, so our hysterical comic book that is coming up next is Ranger Stranger. This is volume one, and it comes out November 28th. This is by Tyler Jensen and Adam Battaglia. It is clearly a dark comedy graphic novel. You can see here from the cover how, I mean, look at this bear. I've never, I haven't seen anything quite like this since I think I was a kid in the 90s. I feel like scary bears were like a big 90s thing, or maybe it was early 2000s. Anyway, this is about a deranged forest ranger that's left in charge of the fictional wilderness that's called Hackenack National Park. This is a vast Bob Rossian. I haven't even heard Bob Rossian is now a, ter now a term. It's a landscape of breathtaking meadows, lakes with friends and friendly clouds and trees <laughs> for adventurous campers to enjoy. Unfortunately, uh, everything, the flowers, the deer, even the park official wants to kill you. Oh my God, I need this. So it sounds scary, because it is, especially with Ranger Garland Woodburn on the trail. Don't let the classic Hollywood leading man smile fool you. Woodburn's passion for nature and proclivity for horror homicides struggle to maintain balance in his addled mind. But not all is lost. Each episode pulls from a myriad of real outdoor topics, such as hiking, fishing, or toad licking. So this graphic novel is designed like 1950s field guides, and it's written by a guide with questionable knowledge of the field. If you want to be spooked, and this is great because it's kind of, you know, I know in November, we're not really thinking of hiking or camping, unless if you're really lucky, you've got like a camper or the gear for it in wintertime, but like, it's pre-spring, you can give this to somebody as a gift and scare the crap out of them. Before it is time for hiking season, people will start thinking about bears in a whole different way. This is called Ranger Stranger. I dig it. This is by Tyler Jensen and Adam Battaglia. Our next graphic novel looks really cool. This is by Image Comics. This is usually I like Image Comics. This is called Two Graves. Wish You Were Here, Volume 1. A dark contemporary interpretation of the Persephone myth. This is similar to uh, The Invisible Life or Addie LaRue or even The Sandman. This is by Genevieve Valentine. Ming Doyle is the artist. And we also have Annie Wu, who's the artist. The cover, as you can tell, is really beautiful, surreal, um, fun. Death stole Amelia the first time in his very long life that he hasn't carried over the soul he was assigned to carry over. It would be romantic, <laughs> except that they're being hunted. And as Amelia and the man with the veil of smoke set out for the ocean in a stolen truck, there is a bloody handprint on his neck and she's beginning to worry it's hers. So it's illustrated in competing points of view, which is interesting. So the narration is from both Death and Amelia. That means we have conflicting and unique perspectives from both of these characters as they go along their adventure. It sounds really interesting. I'm excited to check this one out. This is Two Graves, Wish You Were Here by Genevieve Valentine and Ming Doyle and Annie Wu. The last comic book of today, and I'm, of course, very excited because I love dystopian everything. It is World Tree tree like the e's or threes because we're super elite here uh this is by james tinian the fourth fernando blanco and jordi belair is the artist um if it's james tinian the fourth it's probably going to be very very good it usually like he usually puts out great stuff in 1999 gabriel and his friends discovered the undernet a secret architecture to the internet they charted their exploration on a message board called World Tree, but then they lost control. Someone broke into World Tree, someone who welcomed the violent hold the Undernet had on them. At great personal cost, Gabriel and the others thought they sealed the Undernet away for good. They were wrong, and now the whole world will know the meaning of fear, meaning P H 3 4 R, because leet. Anyway, so this sounds really interesting. I know I'm kind of being a little tongue in cheek with it, but I'm really looking forward to it. I like techie dystopian novels and I haven't really read a ton of them this year and I need to change that before the year ends. This is World Tree 
This is by a ton of amazing people. So if you are interested in any of these graphic novels, make sure to check these out over on our show notes and comment. Let us know what graphic novels you're looking forward to. We may have missed some, especially some mainstream comic books, just because most people who are looking for like Vampirilla and Red Sonia or Spawn, most people are probably subscribed to a comic store or have it on their Kindle, but make sure to let us know what you've been reading lately. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, we like to publish every Wednesday and Friday, so if you are looking for spooky reads that are not comic books, check those out. We do nonfiction, kids books, YA fiction, everything. Join us on our socials, Instagram and Facebook, and of course on YouTube, and spread the word of Dark Side of the Library to your loved ones. And of course, thank you so much for your continued support. Hope to see you soon. Subscribe. Have a creeptastic week.